Hey, welcome to the Conundrum Podcast with Dre. Uh, it's the first episode. Uh, it's where I talk to musicians and get stories, um, who they are, what they do, um, find out what makes them tick. Um, my first guest is uh, who I consider a brother, um, Mr. Warren Beatty. Um, Warren and I met a few years ago on the festival circuit when I was uh, playing in the Terry Whalen Band. Um, he was already with Kendra Gale Band at that time, um, but in, the, in our chat we talk about um, you know where he's from, uh, how he got to start in music, and uh, some of his past projects that led him to where he is today. Um, great chat, funny guy. I think you're really going to enjoy it. Um, in the video description, I'm going to put the uh, links to um, the Kendrick Gale stuff and uh, his Instagram, etc. Uh, so you can find him online and check him out. Um, I don't want to talk too, too long here. Um, I want to get to the good stuff, which is the chat with him. Um, so without further ado, enjoy my conversation with Mr. Warren Beatty. Uh, there. There. Hey. hey. Hey! Yeah. Look at that! That's, <laughs> that only took me five minutes of really weird friggin' friggin' <laughs> friggin' friggin'. How are you doing? It's all good. I'm doing good. How are you? Well, I made it. Yeah, you've been busy. I may or may not be wearing pants. I can confirm that I'm not. <laughs> I, I won't be getting up from here. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, That's I, the thing. I probably have a little bit of this though. Is that okay? Yeah, I got I got some of this. So you know what I should probably do that. Just one second. Hmm. Um, probably always good. Hold on. I'm gonna I'm gonna book off for a second. Okay. Hey hon, would you be able to pass me in my Los Cabos um coffee mug? Nice. My Los Cabos coffee mug. So yeah, this place is completely um, under renovation. Yeah. <laughs> so I, and I just sprung this on camera about 15 minutes ago. I said, oh, yeah, by the way, I'm doing a Zoom call. You're what? <laughs> All good, uh, bro. Yeah, well, I'm going to get my... I found a, I found a, a spot. Thank you. I found a, found a spot that's, uh, that's not nearly as messy. So here, I'll no, do this. A, Look like Letterman. You know, right. you got a nicer backdrop than uh, than I do. You got a nice brick motif and like that. Well, that's nice. Yeah, this is. Uh, we put this up not long ago. It's just a. Uh, it's like a wallpaper kind of thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, I'm not handy enough to put real wood up. Oh, <laughs> neither am I. It's all camera, all this stuff. Yeah. This used. This was. Well, if you saw the up the top of it, it's still all ripped up and whatever but we did what we did so cool yeah we still got some molding and stuff to put up <laughs> um we're just you know taking care of a room at a time yeah <laughs> we got, sorry archer just bellied up to me here and he's got he's like covered in gray paint right now nice he's been he's been playing with his, his little brother in the hallway that just recently got painted so nice. anyway oh there you go all right so, so right what do you got well how's this gonna work um well it's working. We're already rolling. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to, uh, I guess, get to know people more, get their stories, get them to talk, you know, have other okay. people that don't know who you are. I mean, I've known you for a few years now. Um, but other people, and especially because of COVID, we're not able to get to know other people and other bands mm -hmm. and, and within our music community. So I thought this might be a kind of a neat idea. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. Okay. You know. Am I looking? Am I looking in a weird spot right now? Does it, does it look like I'm looking in a strange spot? Uh, well, I mean, one eye's going one way, and the other one's going. <laughs> that's that's, that's <laughs> one blue east, one blue west, right? <laughs> the blue eyes. <laughs> no, you do. No, no, you look great. Okay. And right. You look great. Just, so why? Well, I just smell good too. Smell of vision has. <laughs> we don't have smell of vision yet, so that's good. <laughs> Yeah. All right. So, um, what, uh, how we're gonna, what's going to happen? You're just going to ask me some questions? Yeah. Where? Are you, so, where do you hail from? I'm born and raised here in St. John. Yeah. New Brunswick. Yeah. 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 
uh, so, West Side. I'm a West Sider. If that uh, for some people that know St. John is definitely yeah, it's probably like most most places like Newcastle and Chatham. Right? I'm I'm yeah. a West Sider, born and bred. Uh, I spent a little bit of time uptown, but yeah, never made an East or North, and that's that's it's it. To, to us St. Johners, it's important. Yeah, uh, well, I live, my wife is from St. John, so we uh, we spent a few years there, and uh, we lived in every part of St. John. Like, we lived Did you really? Around, yeah. Wow. Yeah. We were there until about 2007. And were you playing drums back then, or? No, that, that was during my hiatus, when I'd taken some time off, and then uh, I'd gone to college and met my wife and then uh, she was from St. John. So we moved there and then had our son and then opportunity came. Uh, she got some work here. So we moved back to where I'm from, which is Miramichi. So, wow. yeah. So cool. we've been here ever since, since, since 2007. So that, that's one thing you, it's funny because you said uh, uptown St. John is the only place that I know that is doesn't it? have a downtown. It's an uptown. It's an uptown. Yeah. And why, Uptown why Funk. I, I <laughs> yeah. think it's, it's, it's girl. the uh, the Uptown area. Uh, the downtown part of the Uptown is actually at the bottom of the hill next to the water. And everything is up from there. I think that's probably where that comes from. Okay. Um, but I, I, I'm the, I just, I don't know. Why is it West Side and not West End? It's mm. west side, east side, north end, south end. I never noticed that until you just said yeah. that. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> I don't know. It's just what we do. And everything is, uh, I'm going to quote a James Mullinger uh, gag. He always says, you know, how, how do you know you're from St. John? When, when you ask, get asked for directions, it's remember where the Zellers used to be? <laughs> That's, yeah. Yeah, I can give you directions from where the Kmart used to be on the west side. The Dominion used to be. Yeah, so, is, that where, um, <laughs> is that where the Lansdowne place is now? Uh, there's a couple of places. Actually, there's no Zellers in Lansdowne anymore. That's okay. gone. Yeah, all the Zellers are gone now in, yeah. in St. John. So. That's true. Yeah. Right. So you grew up in <laughs> on the west side. I grew up uh, on the west side. Yeah. So how uh, how early did you get into playing music? And was drums the first thing? Drums has been the only thing. Um, I've never played, I, I can barely even pick up a guitar correctly. Um, I think at one point my sister was taking guitar lessons and uh, doing some piano and I tried, I probably tried to dabble around in the piano a little bit. We had a piano when I was a kid growing up, um, but it's never been, it's always just been drums. And if I wasn't playing drums, I was playing lacrosse and uh lacrosse and that was th those are my two my two interests my two hobbies right and uh luckily one of them turned out to be uh, a little bit more uh, lasting the other one i just got old and actually lacrosse stopped uh happening here in st john right after the yeah. king of games here in 85 so yeah okay. so it was lacrosse like an in school like you have like a high school team kind of thing or was it no 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 it was a league um i started playing lacrosse when i was seven and picked up playing taking lessons playing drums when i was probably around 11 or 12. okay and uh that's when lacrosse kind of started taking the back seat but it was always a summer thing right and went and drums are year long year long so yeah yeah um kept that thing. so was there anybody else in the family that like you, know, you say your sister is playing piano like where did the drums itself come from just something you were naturally drawn to on your own or was there an outside influence like the um, family? Well, there's a, I, I, I suppose it's probably better to ask mom, but uh, mom and dad, but uh, dad was a musician. Okay. Uh, a singer in, in a couple of uh, well-known bands around the city. Um, played a lot of the shows back in high school and a little bit after that, he was sort of the, at one point, sort of the St. John Elvis um, didn't wear the, <laughs> that was back in the zoot suit kind of stage and, you know what I mean? He had the, okay. the, the the DA, and he was he was a he was a singer that, that had a guitar um, back then. Didn't play a whole lot of guitar. Recorded a little bit, but nothing major. Okay. But mostly a singer. But we were just I was just brought up on music because Dad was always listening to it. Right. Okay. And what type and of then, was in the house? 
Oh, it was uh, just a lot of rock and roll, a lot of Elvis. Oh, I should say that. A lot of Elvis, a lot of uh, Willie Nelson. Um, I mean, we used to sit and watch the Lawrence Welk show. So, I mean, we, we it was everything, really. Um, and then, uh, and everything on the radio. We always do, our, our summer camp was about, at the time, uh, with the old roads, it was about 30 minutes, 35 minutes away. And it's always the radio came on and we were singing every song that we could. And, you know, that's where that's where the music sort of stayed with us. And mm-hmm. uh, and even in the summer, there was always a, a, a bonfire with an acoustic guitar and whatever else. And I'd be, you know, beating on a box somewhere or trying to keep a, a little bit of time. Yeah. But dad, dad had a band. Um, the, the biggest one, I think, was when I was in middle school, my, my dad had a band and um, it was sort of a country rockish kind of band and uh it was in they rehearsed in the basement and i was just mesmerized by uh my my before that uh he uh, he turned into my drummer uh, my drum teacher but it's Dwayne Patton was the drummer in the band and i was i just sat there and listened to him for hours and just yeah. loved loved it and uh, eventually started taking lessons from him okay so i'm so, assuming he let you like were the drums always in your basement like did he have like a practice kit he kept there or did he have to nope. <laughs> set it up and tear it down every time or? he set it up and tore it down because he was playing he's probably playing in another band or another couple bands around locally so he he just set up what he needed to and then, okay. and then i think uh in middle school i got my first set of westbury's and um before that it was a, like an old kick drum snare drum hi-hat kind of setup hmm. um did a lot of practicing to uh, actually it's funny because we were listening to this the other day at, at mom and dad's house um i had my sons down for my birthday party mm-hmm. and we were listening to the beach boys live i don't know the the album specifically but i do remember playing the hell of it out of it when i was a kid and uh, that's what i grew up I, I well i shouldn't say grew up on but I, that's what i was first taught was the beetle uh, beatles and uh, the beach boys and all the surfer kind of stuff the mama yeah. and papa and yeah, yeah keep a basic four on the floor in the kick drum and and then sort of Dwayne was more of a rock drummer and uh, a real heavy hitter so it was easy to learn the Jerry Mercer stuff from him and right. uh, the John Bonham stuff yeah, yeah. Was, so yeah. so the lessons you were taking was it more to like to music or was it like very rooted in rudimentary stuff uh no it's mostly music yeah okay. Yeah, we did. We, I, I didn't, and I still haven't learned a lot of the stuff. I mean, we've talked about this before, right? You know, <laughs> we, we have. <laughs> you you post these instructional things, and you're you're whacking away on the on the drum pad, and I'm like, I don't even know the name of what you just did. But in fact, here's a here's a funny little story along that line. Yeah, I was filling. Oh, you just cut. And, uh, he he. Whenever he's in a, he's got something else to do or whatever. He gives me a call, and I and I, I'm like the subs, the fun substitute teacher. Come in and show the kids how to spin their sticks, and we played along to music and we had some fun. And uh, anyways, one of the I was I was showing the kids something, and one of the students, uh, he said, "Oh, that was really cool," and I said, "Yeah, I don't, I, I'm not exactly what it, I, I don't know exactly what it's called." He says, "Oh, well, that's that's called a herda." You're playing a herda. <laughs> oh, okay. So I'm doing this, and then I'll do this, right? And I like, I don't know. I know paradiddles, double strokes, you know, five stroke rolls, six yeah. stroke rolls, seven, eight, nine stroke rolls. Yeah, just just <laughs> add a know. number and just keep going. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> flams. I know flams. I know flam. No, I don't even know what a flam is. I've, I've heard that. Ter- I've heard that term before. Oh, stop it. Stop it. You're very, you're, you're far more learned than I am. Uh, no, I don't think so. No, I think until you make it. Yeah. <laughs> they, they make it. You know, if any of my students, uh, I'm going to be starting lessons up again. If any of my students hear this, they'll probably be like, why am I taking lessons from him? He doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> hey, I'll just man, use his I, drum kit. <laughs> like I, I, I walked, oh, of course, the, the little kids come in and they, they're shocked, first of all, that you know, the drum teacher isn't there. Mm. And then this weird, 
bearded kind of guy is sitting in the in the room. You didn't have and, your baseball uh, bat, did you? <laughs> oh no, Lucille <laughs> stayed home, right? Okay, okay. But uh, no, I've, uh, I've, you know, I, I look at them. Okay, okay. Here's what you're going to learn today. Drumming is step one. Have fun. And if you're not smiling, then let's not do it. Right. So, and that's I sort of, I guess that's how I just approach my drumming. Yeah. You know, that's just. I just have fun and whatever. Don't don't ask me to play the same thing twice exactly. Hmm. Never going to happen. No. Um, I'd love it to happen, but you know, a uh, speck of dust flies across in front of me and a squirrel, and next thing, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, two things. One, that's exactly the same approach that I had in giving lessons. It's one. It's about having fun. Um, there's a bit of structure to it just to get them to have something to progress along to, but it's. I mean. Some of the stuff that I do, I play like a matching game. Like okay. I'll I'll play one beat and then I'll get them to play it behind me. Or I'll do a drum fill, but I'll do it slow enough so that you know they can see where I'm going with it, and then they try to, to mimic it. So then eventually okay. they put it all together and then they're playing the beat and then they'll play that drum fill back into the beat kind of thing. So it's okay. all these little I try to make it more like in like a game type of a thing as opposed to you know, here's a chart, you know, it's right, left, right, left, right, left, like whatever sticking it is, like, you know, if it's triplets or, you know, that ends up working into it and they end up doing it, but they're not learning it off the page so much as they're learning it off of the instinct of where to go next. Okay. And, and having fun, you know, so that's, so that's that. I had a second point and I forgot what it was. Okay. <laughs> that's how this is gonna go <laughs> no, that's all right that's all right <laughs> um no my other thing was um with that approach and i find that that's something that needs to be harnessed with kids today um because especially now with you know with covid and and you know kids aren't able to get out and, and do that kind of stuff is that something you're like looking into maybe getting into yourself giving lessons Again, I, I have a hard time justifying giving, asking for money for something that I, I was never technically taught how to do, you know, um, I, I, uh, we, I, I like, that. you know, we talked, we talked about, uh, to, to the, the drum teacher that I was subbing in for, he asked if, if I was available for some more lessons and there's an opening and would you be interested in doing it? And I said, you know what? I'd rather just be the fun substitute guy that comes in and kind of just has <laughs> fun. And, yeah, well, you know, kind of <laughs> destroys about three months of worth of uh, lessons. And, you know, uh, you know, because we, when I got lessons originally from my first drum teacher, it was, you know, you got to learn the basics and here's the basics, Beach Boys. This is, this is, if you can get the, the groove and the feel and how how it all sort of I, I guess it's uh, song structure as well that I had to learn um we just played a lot to a lot of different songs and and it was fun although you know there's a couple of times where we I had to hunker down and learn mama pop uh, you know and the paradiddles and that kind of stuff yeah we didn't spend a whole lot of time on that because it just sort of started happening naturally you know, in a way, um, he showed me how to do a shuffle, uh, and then something else happened. And next thing I know, I'm sort of doing a weird kind of purdy shuffle that I didn't even know I could do, but it just happens, right? It just sort of yeah, all. Yeah, sure. it, it, yeah I, I can. I've never sat down with a practice pad and spent a lot of time playing, so. Mm. Um, I guess whatever I do is is mostly natural. I took some lessons from another teacher that that tried to get me into looking at a book with with uh, rudiments and whatever. And that was like, you know, it, even he admitted he said, you know, you could have been a really good drummer if you would have kind of stuck to it, but you learned as much as you needed to know to go out and play in bars. <sighs> well, okay, you're not wrong. You know, I was playing in bars when I was 17 and a half, 18. Yeah, but so. Like there's, I guess that there's book smart and there's street smart. Both have their place and both are can be successful. I mean, you look at, uh, well, especially in music, but 
Like you look at people like Dave Grohl and, and a couple other names that are escaping me that they dropped out of school yeah. and pursued their passion and did what felt that they needed to do and they've become successful because of that. So yeah. I don't think we can discount the book learning versus, you know, the on the job learning, you know, the just doing it because I'm not, I never took lessons. I mean, my brother played drum and uh, I kind of would sneak and watch what he was doing and figure stuff out, but I never, never really took lessons. He gave me a DVD one time, um, Dave Weckl, Back to Basement. I watched yeah. that like countless times and I guess that was sort of the how to do things, but it was never really like in a lesson format, right? So yeah. I, I think there's a lot of value in, in especially what you can bring that I think you could be a rock and teacher. If I'm uh, well, <laughs> but that's all I mean, I'm not, yeah. Step one, have fun, right? Yeah, exactly. After, after right. that. Yes. You know, I've, uh, I've been, like I said, I've been playing in bars since I was probably 17 and a half or 18. I remember I was in, I was in grade 12 when my first drum teacher decided to leave a band. And he, he gave me the thumbs up to try out for the band. And that's how I, I got into my first bar band um, called Roadhouse in the city. And it was a well-known rock band. And That's a great well, name. See, yeah, yeah, right. And, and it was a great band. Um, and we got to play some pretty cool shows. We played up in Fredericton and St. John. We played the, the big bars back, back in the day. And then um, that was starting to get a little... A little um, too regular, I think, at the time for me. And then I got a call from, actually, I had a, uh, I was at a bar one night and this big guy comes over and puts his hand on my shoulder and says, hey, buds, you interested in playing for me? And I didn't really know who he was at the time. <laughs> Maybe, you know, turns out that it's uh, Kenny McPhee, who is now Julian Austin, right? Um, okay. The big country guy yeah and uh so kenny kind of julian sort of took me under his wing at the time and uh, i knew a couple of guys in the band um actually the drummer that was in the band prior to prior to me and there was there's a long list of great drummers in the band but um he had just left and uh and kenny was looking julian was looking for a drummer at the time so that was my first sort of well boys i'm uh, gonna go play with him now so see you later Right. Um, and that, that that was cool because we were playing original tunes, which was yeah. it was kind of neat. It was that was my start to original tunes. So did you, um, uh, did you tour with them? Was no, like we didn't really. I mean, us? some some no no. We did some shows with uh, in in Moncton, Fredericton, St. John area. You know, nothing, nothing major. So um, before you started going across Canada. Um, yeah, well, I, I've never I never made it up past Ontario actually back even back in the day but uh i was i was in saint john playing with uh toys in the attic that was uh that was kenny's band at the time and he um uh, the guitar player and i were at a party and he disappeared for a while and he came back to the party and he said i was just over at the club six high um and there's a band over there and i just found out they needed a drummer the drummer's quitting and they need a drummer for next week <laughs> So, and he said, and they're really good, man. You got to check them out. So we jumped in the car and headed back over to the bar. And I, I was talking to the sound guy as the boys were playing. And it was a band called Cradle out of Halifax. And they were an agency 2000 band um, and toured all around the, the Maritimes and then Quebec. And, you know, mm -hmm. we spent we spent a lot of uh, time in Newfoundland. But anyways, yeah, so I, I met them and uh, they said, are you interested in doing this? I said, well, I'd like to try out anyways. Yeah. What type so, of music was that? It was uh it was pop rock rock stuff. Um would have been around what well, like early nineties or uh it was like 89, 90, no, nah, it'd be early nineties, yeah. So like early 90, 91, 92. Okay. And it was everything that you were everybody was playing back then. Um like even as far as I think we played some living color, um, some wingers, some little bit of everything back in the day it was a it was the big hair and the, yeah. everybody, you know our our thing was everybody was wearing neon um and it was a one of those atlantic canada's number one party bands we, yeah. had, we had a lot of inflatable uh like a shark and beach balls and stuff like that we'd throw them out in the crowd actually we, we played the bohemian 
a couple times with that band back in the day. I don't know if you remember the bow or not. That's uh, that's up your way. No, Bathurst. Uh, we played the Opera House. Yeah. Remember that? Oh, yeah, yeah so, I remember that. Sad day when that so, burned. Yeah, I mean, there was a whole bunch of weird stuff. But we, we were in there during, um, uh, who's the, the mass merger? Uh, Raymond Legere? Alan Legere, yeah. Alan was here, yeah. yeah, yeah. So we were up in that area, like actually playing at. I think we played the Opera House that night. That he was in, supposedly in that area. The the RCMP escorted us to our hotel and really? back to the bar. And, oh yeah, yeah, it was weird. So yeah, we, that, that was a that was a, a big run. Um, played with them for probably a year and a half, two years, and then uh, we sort of. I think it's still sort of hazy. I. I quit the, the guitar player fired me sort of you know, all in one big kind of thing, but yeah, um, time to move on, I guess. Well, yeah. And I, I called up dad and I said, well, you know, here, here I go. Um, can you come pick me up in Halifax? And he, him and my best friend, Ronnie jumped in a truck and came up, and picked me up and we got my stuff out of the storage room and, and uh, we got home and opened up a case of beer and he said, okay. He said, now I want you to put your drums in the corner and you're going to sit here for three months. And those drums are going to be over there in the corner. And after the three months, if you want to jump on them again and start playing back out on tour, go for it. And if not, it's time to get a job or go to school, one or the other. Okay. And uh, within the first you know, two or three weeks, I got an offer to go and join another band from Halifax. Um, but I stuck to my guns and I told, and I promised Dad I'd do it. So um, I kind of watched the couple of different offers go by um and i just kind of moved on went got a job and uh then i started on my other my other my other career which is the uh, the technical side of it yeah so, yeah, yeah. So, so moving into that like so i don't know if everybody know i mean i know because i know you but uh so you you work at harvest station i do yeah tv station now a tv station but yeah yeah, but so you, were, that, you were the operations manager at Harvest Station for a number of years. Yeah, I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And before okay. that, it was the technical director at the Imperial. Okay, and that's all like behind the scenes doing sound yeah, that, and that kind of stuff. Um, I was mostly lighting because I mean, back in when I was playing in Cradle, you had to set up the lighting before you could set up your drums. Yeah. Right. So I learned all how to set up a lighting system and. And all that sort of stuff, and uh, and then I met a lot of guys out in the doing it in the industry. And back then, I mean, when we were touring, it was a twenty-eight foot cube band full of like full of gear, and there was a little bit of stage gear, yeah. uh, but big massive PA's, and nobody was going out with at least without at least like sixty-four power sixty-fours, and you know, racks upon racks of lighting and, and dimmers and and all that sort of stuff. So I I started getting into it then. And I was in back in high school, I was in the theater arts program yeah. or the, the stage crew back then. It just meant I got you know certain classes off because of assemblies and musicals and that kind of stuff. Yeah. So I always had my hand in it. Um, and then I moved to uh, I, I sort of went through a couple different jobs and I, I was down working at a festival. And uh, when the when the theater was being built, I met up with one of the one of the guys that was basically there hired just to start the building up. And uh, he said, you should come apply for something up there. And I said, well, I don't know what I could do. And he said, well, you know, it's, just get your foot in the door. So I applied for a spotlight operator's job. And within, I don't know, maybe six months, I was the head technician. And another year later, I was the uh, the technical director. Just I just sucked it all in, just loved it. Yeah. You know, And that's when I was playing working 60 to 80 hours a week and like no time for drums. So I took, that's when I had my head. Yes. I had, uh, I took some time, um, uh, got married, had two kids, um, uh, then eventually moved down to Harbor station as the ops manager down there. And mm -hmm. it's a, it's been a great opportunity for me. So being the ops manager at Harbor station, that would have been probably while I was living in Harbor or in St. John. So did yeah. you get to work with some of those big bands that would roll through like Motley Crue and, and that type of stuff? Like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All, uh, 
Kiss and Motley Crue and all those kind of guys. Well, you never deal with the band directly, right? You always deal no. with the, the production right. managers and the, the yeah and the road crews and stuff. And some of them have uh, some great memories. Some of them are you know kind of pains in the ass, but you know it's a yeah. uh, it's it's amazing to see those kind of things go up in the air. Um, yeah. You know, Does I remember? It, it, go ahead. Sorry. I just can't imagine having it. Like, I did a little bit of touring, but not to that level. You know, to be able to go out and do that night after night, town after town. You know, at the end of the, at the end of the night when I was done setting the show up or helping to set the show up, uh, even before I was the ops manager back at the, at the theater where I was working there. You know, I put in twelve or fourteen hours in the day and be exhausted. These guys are jumping on a bus, sleeping for four hours and go to the next venue and doing it all over again the next day. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's amazing, those guys. So. Oh, yeah. I mean, bands live and die by their road crew. I mean, yeah. Without the crew, they, there's nothing. Really. Yeah, it's amazing. And you know, you, you can really tell when you get guys up on stage thanking their own crew, like, yeah. time after time after time. I, that, you know, and that's, I guess, something that I, I appreciate a lot. And when I get to, uh, when I get to thank the guys that are are helping us out, you know, with, with yeah. Denver or with whatever band I'm in, I, I just, you know, those guys are the ones that are showing up three hours before I am to set up, you know, yeah. all the PA and stuff just to deal with this chucklehead, and, <laughs> you know, and I, I go out and make a bunch of racket for an hour and a half and, and they <laughs> make it sound and look good. And at the end of the night, I pack my stuff up, shove it into my matrix and move on to the next play or next show or go home. Yeah, yeah, and uh, they get another show coming up the next day. So yeah, you know, but, everybody. Uh, I remember you posted a picture of uh, Neil Peart's kit uh, with your twenty-year-old. Yeah, so you got to like see and be, and did you get to touch the drum kit? I didn't want to. I was shaking. I was yeah. shaking. That actually, what um, that was one of the coolest experiences because my son was um, started playing drums when he was about three. And he just took to it. He's he's amazing. He's uh, 16 now, um, plays guitar and bass and keyboard. And uh, actually, today he yesterday he just sent me a, a, a song down via the interweb, and uh, mm -hmm. he wants me to play drums to it and then send it back to him. Um, but he's he's writing his own stuff, whatever. Anyways, at the time for his birthday, all he wanted to do was go to the Rush concert with me. Yeah. So we. We got tickets and um, I, I pulled in a favor from a friend of mine who works um, for the, the uh, promotion company and uh, uh, got some, uh, you know, half decent seats, you know, right in the middle sort of thing. Yeah. And uh, took him when he was about, I think he was about nine and he took him to his first concert. We just happened to be the last Rush concert that we were going to see down here. Wow. Um, but on top of that, I kind of, tried to pull a, a couple extra favors and we got a little backstage tour with Lauren is uh, Neil's drum tech and, uh, and Rick and who, who was the promoter at the time came down and helped us out. So yeah, Ryan got to sit on the, on the riser and, you know, he was just mesmerized. He had never seen a uh, rush play, I think on like in a video or something. And then next thing you know, he's sitting on this guy's drum kit. Uh, and then two hours later, He's watching the show and the pyro's going off and the everything that Rush brings to the show and he was just mesmerized. It was awesome. Life changing. Yeah, yeah. So it was, it was really fortunate to be able to give that to him as a yeah. You know, that pull. I don't pull too many too many favors from too many people because I know it's usually they get bombarded with you know oh, yeah. favors Something and stuff. Like but that. I yeah, and, and I had I mean, to do that. Like, knowing who Neil is, like. He was obviously he wasn't even in town yet. He was probably just riding on his motorbike, not even. Well, he, he maybe, but I knew that he he definitely was not going to meet him. But no. I'll tell you, uh, Lauren gave uh, Ryan a pair of drumsticks that that Neil used for sound check. He was actually it was after sound check, so he was in town. Um, but so we walked out. They walked us straight back out in the lobby, and there's you know me. Ryan and I walking out, and Ryan's got a set of drumsticks, and, the, and everybody's like, oh, look, look at the cool little dude with the drumsticks, right on, man. I was like, you don't even know. <laughs> These are Neil's, and he just touched them like three hours ago, man. Yeah. This kid's a legend yeah. right now, as far as yeah, I'm yeah. concerned. Right? It's my own son. That's amazing. Yeah. Those are, those yeah. Are yeah. He's going to hold on and cherish that. And, you know, oh, yeah. 
I hope so. And then, you know, at, at, at uh, about 13 or so, 14, maybe he, he turned around and said, Dad, I don't think I want to play drums anymore. And I was crushed. I was like, what are you talking about? You don't want to play drums anymore? He goes, yeah, nobody sees you when you're playing drums, Dad. <laughs> I said, well, you're right. Okay. But then he picked up guitar and he just, he's amazing. He's just a natural at anything he touches so. yeah i saw the, like there's a video i don't know if you still have it on your facebook but from harvest when you were uh filling yeah. in with terry whalen and uh he got up and played like man yeah he's got, first time he's playing got in front cool. of anybody that he didn't know right yeah. and he just he was a pro just a pro and he i was like man were you nervous he goes no dad they were all drunk <laughs> <laughs> he knows the deal yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's a that uh, that bar in Fredericton. That's a pretty sweet bar. I mean, it, it's small, it's cramped, but it you know uh, the Lunar Rogue, I believe it is, right? Yeah. Yeah. I played there when I was with Terry. Uh, we, I played there for Harvest with him, and uh, it's a it's a great gig. And, and great Terry gig. was so gracious to a invite me, and then um, you know Terry, uh, uh, we we talked about it a little bit, Ryan and I, because it was a pub. And I could get him in to at least watch. And then I said, you know what? Maybe I'll just ask Terry. And I asked Terry if it was okay. And he's, he's man, absolutely. Yeah. You know, get him, get him to bring his guitar. And uh, you know, so at one point, I mean, there's Terry and Terry Jr. playing together. And I was always in awe of that. You know, I think yeah. it's great. And then to be able to sit there and you know, watch my son play, and you know, the rest of my family was there. My lady was there. My my son was there. Actually, Brian's Brian's mom was there. Uh, my parents and a couple of other friends. And they just we get to watch this kid have his first show, and it was man, it's amazing. It was it was impressive. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's got some he's got some skills, man. Yeah, and and his older brother is going to be the the entertainment lawyer. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> lawyer, he's, uh, yeah. he's, he's he's pretty sharp. Yeah, he's yeah. We're uh, we we. Ryan and I are good at lifting stuff, and his mom and her, and my my other my oldest son are are the smart ones. <laughs> so it works. There you go. Yeah. So um, so your main gig now, well, other than not doing anything like the rest of us, um, is with uh, with uh, the Kendrick Gale band. Mm. Um, being you are the band. I am the band, yeah. And well, that's, uh, so that's my five, I don't know if you heard that or not. That's my five year, a five month old puppy getting a little rangy with my my older dog. <laughs> Sorry, they're they're like three feet away from the tablet here, so it yeah. might go if if everything goes this way. It's yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, it's perfect. Yeah. Um, so your your latest album, Kicking and Screaming, which was released two years ago, um, yeah. you guys reported that in PEI. Uh, no, Cape Breton, actually, in, in Breton. Sydney, okay. just outside of Sydney, actually, at um, Lakewind, um, Lakewind Sound Studios. I don't know where you're thinking it's in PEI. No, 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 it's Cape Breton. We have uh, we have a lot of great friends up in, in Cape Breton, in Sydney in particular, in that area. And uh, we we were shopping around for a, a place to, to record the album. Yeah. And um, Fred Lavery, who owns the studio... Um, we had met a couple different times through, uh, we did a fundraiser in Sydney the year before, and um, it was the cancer patient care fundraiser um, for the, the hospital there. And we were asked to play and we went, so we drove up and played our 20 minute set and they treated us like, like Kings. And we had a, we had a great time and Fred's band played as well. And um so that was our connection, and, and we were at the the following ECMAs, and we were kind of putting feelers out in in Cape in Sydney, yeah. uh, that we were looking for a place to record, and uh, we we were actually told that hey, Fred's looking for you, and okay, yeah. so we we went and he was at a uh, was at one of those conferences at during the ECMAs, and and uh, we talked a little bit, and he said, so you if you're interested, we can we can work out a deal, and mm. you know. And uh, so, yeah, we went up there and spent two weeks, we, two separate weeks. The first week, we, uh, it was, it wasn't even a week, I guess, a couple of days, but we, we got sounds the first day and then recorded six or seven tracks in that first day. Mm -hmm. And then uh, four more the next day and then went back 
to uh, went back home for a couple of weeks, um, raised up a couple of more shekels from playing gigs, and then went back up and finished the other six songs. And because uh, all those uh, songs and then, were what's that? All those songs were tried and tested, like from because I remember like yeah. everything that you guys were doing in your shows are all made it on the album. All yeah. those songs were really well worked out, and like all the parts were there. So like yeah. when I listen to that album, I almost feel like I'm in the room with you guys, and it has that live feel because I'm from I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, but you guys did a lot of it like off the floor, right? All of it. Yeah, we oh. did all of it. Uh, there was a couple of uh, guitar overdubs that something was just a little bit needed. Yeah. Um, and a couple of vocal uh, doubling on some vocals of background yeah. vocals and whatever. And I think there was a couple of tambourines that got added in. Yeah. Uh, there was one time, one no. song where the, the yeah. tempo kind of got away from us a little bit. So we stopped, tried no. it again, but basically it was almost everything was live off the floor in one track. And, um, no. and we wanted yeah. to do that because, you know, nobody believed that a two piece band uh, can sound full. And we just wanted to kind of prove to people that we could do it and Absolutely. still, you know, because every the, the two other albums that Kendra had put out as a band, the band CDs, mm -hmm. um, had bass and keyboard and all these other big production to it. And uh, so we just thought, you know what, let's go and just do what we do and have fun and see how it works out. So it's my favorite record from uh, that catalog. Thanks, man. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm proud. It really of it. feels good. Like when you're listening to it, it really does have that that feel that vibe and it swings like that's one thing that about in your drumming and it i guess it comes back from when you were learning just learning on playing those beach boy records like it it has a nice swing to it like that's just part yeah. of the style okay. yeah yeah I, I yeah exactly i've got i i'm not a chops guy and i'm not a, a speed guy so i guess the only thing that's left is groove right and i try to do my best to keep a, a groove in there and, and keep, you know, just keep people's toes tapping. And, you know, we, we listen back at stuff that we do and go, eh, it's not really there yet. Or, yeah. you know, some, some songs are, here's my version of punk or here's my version of uh, hard rock or here's my blues version of a, a tried and true blues group, but yeah. it all ends up sort of at the same feel. Yeah. Right. One way or the other. It's one of my favorite records. Well, thanks, man. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway. Well, that's that's you know, and Kendra, God, she's so easy to work with, and and we write. She writes stuff. She well, she'll she'll come in with ideas, but she won't have a complete song because she knows that when we get together, I'll come up with a beat that she probably wasn't thinking of. I mean, she's a very good drummer herself, and yeah. uh, so she writes that dynamic where she is a drummer. Um, if I'm not mistaken, she started out as a drummer. Yeah. And so, I mean, she would have like a very different uh, take on a particular riff that she's writing probably in her head. And then you'd yeah. come in and do something totally off from what she was thinking. That whole yeah. conversation, like, does she ever come to you and like, you know, that's not really what I was thinking or? Every now and then, every yeah. now and then. It does happen, yeah, but, but not very often, I mean, um, and, uh, and I'll give her, sometimes I can give her two or three different choices. And, yeah. and we'll, we'll, we've done this. We've, we've beat a song to death for a couple of years now. I mean, we've been together seven, almost seven, eight years now. And um, there's been times where it just, it wasn't working. And she'll let me know that it's not happening or, or I'll just kind of go, you know what, maybe that's not quite right. Um, in fact, there's been a couple of songs in the, the last bit of writing that we've done um it, the, she brought back a song that we were working on for a while and never really went anywhere and and she just played it a little bit differently and as soon as she did that my brain went to a totally different side and went oh, okay this is what needs to go in that's finally it okay right? so yeah the the process is kind of pretty basic but again you know she'll she'll start into a groove and i'll have you know within the first two or three bars i'll have something in my head right away yeah. it's just we're connected pretty pretty tightly that way yeah so, so are you guys sending things back and forth digitally because of covid uh we were yeah um luckily we uh we actually did get together a couple of different times we've 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 been 
very, very fortunate. Being a two-piece band, it gives us a little bit more freedom because the, you know, there's uh, the numbers with COVID's mostly the numbers game, right? So okay. two two guys in a, or two people in a band uh, versus five, instantly your numbers, if the band numbers are lower, then the bar can have more people or the, you know, the festival that you play at uh, is a little bit, they would, they'll take you a little bit easier, maybe, I think. I don't know. And, and we're just, we just want to have fun. And I think maybe that's some of the reason why we're getting some extra gigs as well. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, but, being but, gone back to Orange again for St. John and in Moncton, like you had that. Well, prime, prime example. I, I should be coming home from Moncton right now from the show that we were supposed to do last night. Yeah. That got canceled or postponed, I guess. We're going to, we're, and we were we were talking about another date for that, and I think we're going to wait until about the middle of January to to do it. Uh, we we were given an option of a couple of weeks from now, uh, but I think we're going to let it kind of sit. You know, it's it's so important just to try to stay stay safe, and especially with my job, uh, my my day job, I can't really play around with it too much. Uh, mm -hmm. If I catch it, it's there's a lot of people that get affected. Um, so I'm I'm pretty pretty cautious, right? So, so I should have asked you to wear a mask. <laughs> I don't want to see your face. <laughs> um, so being that you've done quite a few different styles of bands and played in different bands, um, what uh, what work are you most proud of that you've done? A uh, Kendra, sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, um, I've. I've been lucky to play in, in a bunch of bands, a um, bunch of cover bands and uh, a, a couple of original bands, but this is, it was a weird situation that got Kendra and I together and it just, it's just the right fit, right? Yeah. We were like brother and sister. Um, what we do, we have fun doing, um, there's no pressure. You know, there's been a couple of times where we were like getting a little, little rangy because things aren't happening fast enough. And then, you know, she'll just kind of go, well, it's okay. So just relax. You know? right. I'm like, oh, why aren't we doing this way? You know, <laughs> it's okay. You know, yeah. like this COVID thing is driving me crazy. And I'm like, oh my God, are you kidding me? She goes, yeah, yeah. Well, there's going to be more gigs. Don't worry. You know, yeah. um, but to, to be able to do a, a thing like kicking and screaming, um, the shows that we've done um because yeah, you guys you know, have been pretty big stages yeah we've we've been really lucky yeah we've uh we've played some some great spots i mean some of the the best stages are the small ones too right yeah the you know playing to play to 20 people in a snowstorm up in bathurst and those 20 people we still keep in touch with or playing at terry whalen's barn yeah uh, you know just to put it in your your sort of neck of the woods yeah. um but it's the people that we meet and the you don't get to do that in the bigger shows um and especially in the in the large the festivals where you just sort of you you show up and they stick you on and then you're you're gone and they sort of oh here's here's your hat what's your hurry moving on right yeah. um but that that happens in the bigger festivals but uh some of the smaller ones we get to stick around and hang out with and, yeah and they're fun now i mean back in the cradle days we were playing at the Misty Moon and and uh, Crazy Horse and uh, oh, what's the the place in Smooth Herman's in in Sydney in the bigger bars, uh, the cabarets, and we were playing to you know the Crazy Horse held twenty five hundred people the night that we played for we opened for Meatloaf. It was crazy. Um, you opened right, for Meatloaf. Yeah. Meatloaf. Uh, yeah, we did Meatloaf. We opened for Lee Aaron, uh, Joan Jett. Um, I think it was like a tragically hip, the, the road apples band, I think was, was a big one at the misty moon. It might've been, yeah, there's a, there's been a lot of great bands that, I, you know, I'm back in the scene back in the day, it was 2,500 people would cram into a bar, Yeah, you know, and these are big, massive bars and, and they'd stay open till three and you didn't start until 11 o'clock. Right. Yeah. And so, uh, I've sort of seen over the, I don't know, I'm 51 now, so however many years it is, uh, I've been lucky enough to see the the, the biggest, the, 
you know the big the big shows and then down to playing at uh well what's the what's the place in in uh in the she there with the uh O'Donoghue? no no i love that i love them oh yeah uh no it's it's great it's a small little place right next to the coffee shop oh mill cove no um, no um next to the coffee For, uh, the the one that we played together, the uh, on top of the uh, the goody shop. No, up. no, no. Right in between those two spots is the this is a little tiny, tiny, tiny bar. Oh, um, the boulevard. It used to be called the Boulevard. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah okay. uh, it's the uh, Apparel Lounge now. Okay. So yeah. there, yeah, we played okay. at the Boulevard, and it was it was like I had enough room for my snare drum and a kick drum, I think. And, That's and funny because we played when we were the Dubiasis, and we were doing more of a Kind of a country western funk vibe um we had five piece up there where <laughs> yeah. at, the, at the window or <laughs> no no it was like against the where the where the tv is like we're on your way to, yeah. the, to the bathrooms yeah yeah <laughs> i was using a like a three p i had like a floor tom and a kick snare so yeah. i had like one crash and my ride i had it like on top of my bass drum you yeah. know room and then so there was me and Jack and Sean and his cousin Dale was playing uh, rhythm guitar at the time. And then we had uh, a guest with us, uh, Tommy Dawson, who was playing harmonica. So we had five wow. of us in that in that little area. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, anyone I, that knows the this. Boulevard knows it's it's like basically a little closet area that you, the band sets up in, like as far as the room goes, because there's tables, and then you have to have room for people to get by to get to the restroom so it's exactly it's a, it's yeah. a very small place yeah we so played in a, a place in, we, we did a, a place called not my dog in toronto and uh it was one of our our little road trips up to ontario and we showed up and the lady uh, you know walked in the door and it, it was a similar bar like just a straight down sort of alleyway kind of bar and uh, the lady said um Here's where you're going to play. And it's like, okay, we're going to play here. Good. And don't stomp your feet because the people upstairs will complain because the building shakes. Shakes. How so, anyways, yeah. Oh, there. well, it was, it, we played pretty quiet, but we had a great time. And, you know, it was, I, I we got there and, and, uh, and I said, geez, I, I hope we're going to make some money. Is it covered? Do, cover charge thing at the door, Kendra? And she said, no, it's a patch your hat. We drove to Toronto for a patch your hat. Well, it turned out to be like our best gig. You yeah. know, the whole the whole four or five shows that we did up there. And as far as monetarily, we did a we did a house uh house concert up there as well, which is which is great, you know. Yeah. So but yeah, we we've been lucky. We played, you know, every I think on our bio it says from from a closet to a to uh, a festival, right? We'll, we'll play yeah. just about anywhere. So. Yeah, because yeah, you guys did the ECMAs a couple years ago, um, Music New Brunswick a couple times. Yeah, we've we've been we've been lucky. We've played two or three, four. Well, Kendra started playing the ECMAs when she was fourteen, um, just doing acoustic things and little pop up shows and whatever yeah. else. And my first one was uh, oh, I can't remember. It was in PEI. My very first one, I was nervous, nervous. And by that time, Kendra's like, yeah, don't worry about it. It's not. <laughs> you kidding me? It's easy made. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. You know, because you know, from from cover band boy, right? I yeah. I, that was a that was a big deal playing in front of industry people and, and whatever else. And now I'm still get nervous playing shows. I do. Yeah, I do get nervous. I don't um I don't get as nervous about who's in the crowd anymore it's just whether or not you know how the night's going to go and whatever else um if i don't feel it hmm. i get nervous because i don't know what's going to happen um sometimes okay. it's funny i was talking to camera the other day and I, you know it's just some days you just i don't even know if the gig's going to happen because I, do, I just don't feel it like the day before and sure enough, this weekend, I, I was supposed to play in, in Moncton on Friday night with Matt Landry Band, mm -hmm. and then Saturday night in Moncton with Kendra uh, for the SSI soundstage online thing. And I didn't I didn't have any premonitions of either one of them. 
So yeah. I was kind of like, yeah, this is probably not going to happen. Probably not going to happen. Sure yeah, yeah. Sure enough, canceled. Yeah, yeah. but. Yeah, we were supposed to have um, a band, I won't say rehearsal, because we're going to start writing new material. So whatever, ah. you, call, whatever you call that. And yeah. uh, Sean being in Moncton. Um, I call it good is what I call it. That's awesome. Good, a good time. Um, yeah. yeah, so because yeah, Jack has about, I don't know, he says about 10 or 12 songs. He has about basically enough for a new album, which I haven't heard yet. So, wow. Yeah. Well, he's been writing during this whole COVID thing, and he had a bunch of songs before. Um, yeah. There's a couple of songs that we used to do a different way. And as you know, we, we changed their name, and we kind of went more in, in a heavier direction. So some of the softer songs that we used to do don't fit anymore. So he's kind of reworked those. Um, so there's, yeah, there's there's material there enough for another album. So I haven't heard any of it. So we were supposed to get together on Friday no. to start that process, and sure enough, COVID says no. Cool. Um, yeah. Exactly. So I'm sure I'm sure Jack and I will get together again, just the two of us to kind of start that process and. I'll usually record it and send it to Sean and you know Moncton. Like we'll have to do figure something out to to get the wheels moving, at least yeah. you know for our own sanity. If if not shows, at least you know do that. Yeah, I you got to at least keep going, right? That, that's uh, when the when we first got locked down, um, I get kind of locked out of my space. I have a oh cat. Who's this now? This is Rory. Rory, yeah. oh, I look at the markings. He's he got, beautiful. He got his name from one of the uh, Doctor Who companions. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah you're Perfect. a Whovian, aren't you? I'm a Whovian. Yeah. 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 I've 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 been a little uh, I've been a little absent in the last couple of years. Um, I don't know. It just hasn't been a David Tennant's one of my one of my favorite ones for sure. But I, I'm still a, a, a so uh, screwdriver on my arm. Oh, you do not. Look at yeah, that. That's awesome. That's, See? That's the, that's the Tenth Doctor's uh, song screwdriver. So it's David Tennant. Um, Is it David Tennant? Oh, right on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my wife and I got matching tattoos on our 10th anniversary. Right. That's we wicked. With the 10th, 10th Doctor, 10th anniversary. Um, Perfect. So our 20th is coming up, and there isn't 20 Doctors, so we're going to have to figure something else out. No, that's right. That's right. <laughs> they're only that's that's now. very cool, though. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I grew up, I mean, we only had three channels down here at one point, and everybody was watching MPBN at one point, which is the main public broadcast network. And uh, that's Doctor Who was on there all the time. So I was a Tom Baker, big, big, big Tom Baker guy. Yeah. So who, uh, who was your who's your main doctor? Tom Baker. Tom for Baker? Sure. Yeah. yeah, for sure. And then David Tennant's probably my next favorite. I, I just, something about that character did really well for me. Yeah, uh, and the storylines were a little bit were pretty cool as well. So, yeah. Did I leave my jacket so, up here? just a second. Yeah, right there. Did I leave my jacket up here? Right there. It's right there. Yeah, area. sorry. My, yeah. my son's looking for his jacket in the middle of chaos here. If I if I spun this thing around, you'd well, a camo <laughs> would kick my ass, <laughs> and b uh, you'd be pretty surprised. Yeah, um, like I, I positioned the camera just to see what's in frame. Everything else yep. is just like a tornado into chaos. So I, I, was allowed, I was allowed this shot. That's it. That, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> yes, dear. Um, yeah. We'll, we'll wrap this up real, real soon anyway. Um, so what, during all of this, it's hard to stay positive and, and keep going. What what do you uh, get your motivation from your inspiration from now to because you're always whenever I'm talking to you I always smile and laugh because you're always so upbeat and positive. Um, where does that come from? Um, well, lots of it has to do with Kendra, as far as playing goes. Um, like I said, she's so laid back and just does I you know there's very very little that lets that roll that bothers her she kind of rolls everything off which is a saving grace because I I was getting pretty owly at one point um just just getting frustrated and you know why why we couldn't get the this recorded fast enough or why this you know whatever or, or we weren't gigging enough for me and all that kind of stuff yeah um, you like to say busy so, yeah oh I love to yeah I can't I don't like 
I don't like not playing. Um, so, I mean, and, and luckily, you know, I get I get great support at home. My lovely lady takes good care of me and, and likes what I do, and and uh, that helps a huge amount. I, I get a chance to just say, hey, hon, I'm going to go down and hit some stuff for a while, and and she lets me. Um, no, <laughs> no question. Yeah. That way. Um, so I get a chance to do that, and I, I I've been always keeping my fingers. Like I said, I don't I don't like not playing. Kendra's got another couple of projects now that she's working on. Yeah. So that gives me a, a a little bit more room where I can just go down and I have a, a great space down uh, not too far from here. It's about like literally three minutes from where I live and I can just go down and, and put on whatever music I want and play for three, four hours at a time and not worry about bothering anybody. And, and uh, so that's, that's really handy. Uh, when COVID hit, I, I got kicked, more or less kicked out of the space. Um, mm -hmm. There's some essential workers that were based out of that building. So, uh, so I went to my boss at, at TV station and I said, you know, if I don't get to play soon, I'm going to lose my mind. So he said, just go set up one of the dress rooms. They're not going to get used. So mm -hmm. I did. I, I, I broke into my space and I grabbed all my, all my gear, all my recording stuff, uh, soundboard, mics, cables, everything else, all my drums, and uh, moved them all into one of the dressing rooms. And I started uh, trying to trying to get this Kazam thing, I think it's called, where it's it's like a jam sort of thing, yeah, yeah. Uh, online jamming. And uh, I just wanted to keep busy. And I was hoping that if I could get it working well enough, Kendra and I could log in and we'd work on some stuff, or yeah. maybe Matt Landry and, and Larry Patterson could you know, jump in and we could work on some stuff with him. As well, Terry uh, Terry Whalen wanted to get to do some stuff as well, um, and then that sort of morphed into uh, learning how to record the drums on my own and send it digitally to somebody else. Um, so now that's the next thing that I can actually put another feather in the old cap and the, yeah. in, throw it into my bag of tricks and take it with me. So uh, we're you know, I've, I'm working with another kind of uh, a group of guys right now doing all the old 80s and 90s kind of covers and having some fun with it, you know, doing some that, white snake. And, is that with Piero? Yeah. Uh, no, that was that was one project. Yeah, it's called Project Q. We were doing that online during the during the COVID. Yeah. Um, awesome. So, yeah, it was fun. It was a, it was a nice distraction. Everybody needed to do that. Right. So we actually get a chance to sort of play, but not play. Um but this, uh, we got a couple of the guys from that group and I got together and we're doing um, sort of another project. It's just a little, it's a fun thing right now, you know, because yeah. there's no gigs, so you might as well yeah. just have fun. Um, so we're going to start working on that a little bit more. And you'll probably see some online shows coming out of that um, or the online covers coming out of that. Um, same sort of thing as, as what Pierre is doing. And, and yeah, I was, I was just talking to Pierre the other day. and. We're talking about doing some Project Q stuff. I don't know. Did you hear that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The the little guy's uh, he's he's just at that dangerous zone where he can get up on he can grab coffee coffee table stuff. They call them counter surfers. Awesome. So he was he was digging at a pair of sneakers and then grabbed a, a sheet of paper towel. Was it? Huh? Yeah, paper towel. He was going to attack that. <laughs> That's awesome. Anyways, yeah. So there's there's some happiness and joy right there. These yeah. two little kids, yeah, you know, two the dogs are gorgeous, man. They are, yeah. I'm pretty yeah. happy, yeah, pretty happy with them. They're they're awesome personalities. So yeah. a great addition, and that's that's Cam and I's family. That yeah. and two two cats. So yeah, we, we rescued a dog from uh, down the states last July, and he's a handful, man. But he's he's so worth <laughs> it, though. Yeah. yeah, good for your soul, eh? Yeah, no, he's an he's a. Uh, I'd say he's an abomination, but <laughs> well, he's he's part pug, part lab. So those are two dogs that would never hook up naturally, right? Okay. <laughs> well, maybe so, after some drinks on a Saturday night, you never know. <laughs> yeah. No. But he's, We've uh, all had those, Andre. We've all had those. We've all had those. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, I think this is a good spot to end the the, the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> before you get before i get you in trouble is what you're yeah. saying yeah no, um 
but uh, just in closing, did you have a did you have a drummer joke you wanted to share? You know, I forgot all about those drummer jokes. Yeah, no, no, no I, nothing, nothing that I'd be overly proud of listening back to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good, man. Good. But no, it's it's uh. Yeah, no, I'm just I'm just so happy to be a part of this. Thank you, man, for thinking of me. Yeah. And uh, hopefully, hopefully you had a good time. And I had a great time. Didn't make an Irish myself, and we need to get together soon. Um, yeah. You know, I, yeah. I still I still say that there's some there's actually we're we're pretty lucky to be a part of that Los Cabos artist family for sure. And I thank you for that. A lot of no, no, you're the you're the turkey that got me interested yeah, you you got me into using them so oh, yeah. i just returned the favor and got you into i i doing appreciate them. it giving them an extra little kick in the in the butt but anyways yeah. no i think we should i think we should plan on doing that if you're talking to some more of these guys i think what we should do is is when this whole thing lifts yeah we should try to get together all 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 the maritime guys that can do it yeah. and gals get together yeah. somewhere and have a have a good night of uh, drinks and tomfoolery. Absolutely, man. You know, hopefully it'll be at a Six Guns concert. Maybe well, concert would be what? Three people? That's our usual crowd. So. Yeah, well, see, that's all you need. So <laughs> Don't mind that. By the way, your, your album, man, is, is awesome. I love it. Oh, thanks, man. I'll get it. I, I had it on my, at my work computer for on rotation now, probably. Well, since since you actually started, since you posted it, it's on there. So I hear it all the time now. It's great. Awesome. Thank really you. good stuff. Appreciate awesome. it. Awesome. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to the new stuff. And hopefully we'll get some new stuff of our own recorded soon. I don't know what we're going to do with that. We don't know. But for now, we're just trying to stay safe. And hopefully you and yours stay safe. That's, that's number one priority right now. Yeah. yeah. For sure. All right, man. Say hi to the guys for me. Will do, man. Yeah. We'll do this again real soon. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, let's let's do this without being all formal and shit. Yeah. 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 I agree. <laughs> I agree. Love you, brother. Love you Take too, care. Man. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. So that was my conversation with Warren B. Um, super cool guy. I'm um, going to have him back on again. We left a lot of stuff on the table in that chat. Um, we didn't even get into, like, gear and, you know, endorsements and all that stuff. Um, yeah. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed that chat. Um, please leave comments, suggestions. Um, I want to make this as interactive as I can, and I want to keep it going as long as I can. Um, so I've got some more guests lined up, and uh, hopefully sooner rather than later um, I'll be getting to those. Um, but until the next one, have a good night, or day, or whatever. Stay safe, wear a mask. Um, yeah, just be safe, take care, and... Uh, I love you guys.